Speak to quarters. No, no, the guard. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Flint stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's Indomitable Man of the Sea, Horatio Hornblower. Only several months ago, I'd been a country squire, Sir Horatio Hornblower, in residence with my lovely wife, Lady Barbara. Wearing fashionable clothes, sitting down each mealtime to choice foods, and yet, though my conscience troubles me in saying it, I'd left it all with no trace of regret. And once aboard the Nonsuch, a Commodore now, in command of a squadron of six vessels, I felt really alive. Not until Brown, my orderly, reminded me that evening off Bornholm did I realize I hadn't so much as touched the delicacies that Lady Barbara had so thoughtfully provided when we sailed. There's cheese, sir, and there's wine, and there's butter in clocks. Her ladyship made a special point that the butter would turn rancid unless it was you, sir. Well, time for supper already, Brown. Four bells, sir. And Captain Bush is dining with you as usual. Mm -hmm. I should think a bit of cheese instead of ship's biscuit and salt beef would be a welcome change. There's nothing wrong with biscuits and beef, Brown. Good Navy fare, both of them. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, but uh, begging your pardon, sir, I... <coughs> A signal from the Raven, sir. The Raven? What is it? She sighted a Swedish vessel that wants to speak with the Commodore. I see. Mm, must have someone of importance aboard. All right, I'll come on deck. <clears throat> Ask Captain Bush if you'll be kind enough to join me. Aye, aye, sir. Sir? What, Brown? Oh, what we shall have for supper? Oh, oh suit yourself, Brown. Suit yourself. <laughs> Poor Brown. No sooner had I snapped at him than I regretted being so brusque. Yet how could I bother with food with my mind full of so many concerns? We'd been a month already in the Baltic with express orders from the Admiralty to make it as uncomfortable as possible for Bonaparte. A show of British strength was needed, definitely. Russia was neutral, but with all Europe in Boney's grasp, Russia's help was desperately important. And what strength had we shown? A few small engagements. It would take more than that to bring the Tsar to side with us against Napoleon. <laughs> I stood on the quarterdeck beside Captain Bush, waiting for the Swedish vessel to come alongside. I came near to telling him my doubts and worries. I decided against it, at least for now. There's two of them coming aboard, sir. A quarter glimpse of that first one. I'd say a Swede. I hope he brings some news, whoever he is. How long has it been since we've had any, Bush? I'd say weeks, sir. So should I. For all we know, Bonaparte may have already attacked Russia. Or Russia may have given up without a struggle. Yes, sir. Sir, the second one aboard. If that isn't a British uniform, I'm a starfish. It is, a guard's uniform. A Colonel Bush, a Colonel of the Guards here in the middle of the Baltic. Ah, uh -huh. well, at least he knows enough of ceremonial to make sure he salutes our quarterdeck. <laughs> Good 
evening, sir. Uh, you are Captain Sir Horatio Hornblower? Yes, Commodore commanding this squadron. I am Colonel Lord Witchwood. I've dispatched you from our ambassador at Stockholm, sir, and I've also several of the latest newspapers. Uh, newspapers? Oh, good. We've been quite short on news, of course. Yes, I'm sure you have. Oh, uh, have you made the acquaintance of Baron Basse? Honored. He's a uh, representative of Sweden. He also has some messages. Well, gentlemen, uh, forgive me. Perhaps the best place for this discussion would be in my cabin. Captain Bush and I were just about to dine. If you'd be good enough to join us. Well, uh, Our I, table uh, can still boast a few small delicacies. There's, there's cheese, Stilton, I believe, and uh, um, O'Brien. Oh, uh, yes, sir. But there's cheddar also, and there's uh, smoked mutton ham and jam, sir. Well, it's break cold. it out at once, sir uh, Brown. Uh, Lord Witchwood, I notice that these newspapers are in German and Polish. Quite so. You can translate? I? <laughs> Barbarous tongues like that, sir. English good enough for me, sir. And you, Baron? Uh, beg pardon. German I can to some extent, but the Polish, no. Oh, well, we'll manage, Baron. Uh, Bush, will you pass the word to my clerk, Sorger, to come to my cabin at six bells? He's a Finn, but he's told me that he speaks all the Baltic languages. One is the Königsberger Hartinger Zeitung, Sir Horatio, published under French censorship, of course. It reports on a meeting at Dresden. Bonaparte is there. At Dresden? Yes, Baron. Oh, go ahead, Zorka, go ahead. There are nine army corps. Huh? At Dresden, at Warsaw, at Danzig. Ha! Ah, all aimed at Russia, it appears, Hornblower. How many men would you say that meant all together? Well, you'll be able to calculate that better than I, Colonel. Oh, yes, yes, army men, of course. Oh, but well, I'd say it might come to a half a million. But well, here is something, Sir Horatio. The Warsaw Gazette has a long article about Russia. Well, read it, Sorga, read it. It calls Alexander the barbarian ruler of a barbarian people. Uh, thank you, Sorga. Um, yes, I think that will do for now. Yes, sir. Good night, gentlemen. A strange one, that one, Commodore. He has hate in his eyes. Yes, possibly, Baron Basser. However... It goes late, and if you and Colonel Witchwood intend going back ashore, we'd best... Uh... Uh, 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 Commodore Hornblower, I don't think we uh, are going ashore. What's that? Uh, to put it another way, uh, Baron Basser and I wish to stay on board the Nonsuch. This is a ship of war, Colonel. I'm afraid I must... Uh, insist... Quite so. Allow me to present this dispatch, sir. You will notice it's from His Britannic Majesty's Ambassador to the Court of Stockholm. Mm. Let's see. Mm. Bonaparte has invaded Swedish Pomerania. Now, this is news. Uh, Baron Bassi, is, is Sweden then no longer neutral? There has been no formal declaration of war, Yes, sir. but you have been invaded. Aha. Uh -huh. I understand, yes. Much still depends on Russia, is that it? Everything depends on Russia. We scarcely could move alone. Well, Baron, that's one reason we are here, to prove to you that you are not alone. The balance of the dispatch explains more fully, Sir Horatio. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, I am directed and required to enable Lord Witchwood to open communication with the Russian government so as to assure His Imperial Majesty the Tsar of the full support by land and sea of British forces in the event of war between Russia and France. I am further directed to make use of any opportunity that may present itself to further better relations with the Russians. Better relations? What's that mean, sir? A diplomatic language, Bush. It means bring young Tsar Alexander into our camp as an ally. Exactly, exactly. And by whatever means. It had better be soon. 600,000 of Napoleon's troops massed on our borders. A show of strength that Sweden cannot match. We've got our own strength, Baron. Strength, Captain Bush. Six British ships. No, no, no. Don't look down your nose at him, Basser. Besides, Alexander's a curious fellow. Has a mind of his own, highly emotional. Never know what might influence him one way or the other. Might be anything. Oh, no disrespect to his great eminence, of course. Well, Commodore? Colonel Witchwood, this dispatch employs the words directed and required. Yes? May I point out that the wording should have been request and advise. An ambassador cannot give orders to a naval officer. Well, I say now... And furthermore, my orders from the Admiralty said nothing about taking part in politics. Politics, sir? Important politics? Sir, what could be more important than to convert Alexander to your I cause? I am a naval officer, not a politician. Still... Uh, sir, if I may point out something yes, to yes, you... Yes, no need to point it out, Bush. I know what you're going to say. Uh, the very presence of a British squadron well to eastward in the Baltic could have a sizable effect on Alexander. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, I offer you the hospitality of my ship. Captain Bush, will you give orders to alter our course, if you please? 
Our destination is the Russian port of Kronstadt. arrived in Kronstadt Harbor, but all night long we lay under the guns of Russian fortresses. I tried to show much more assurance about this whole queer project than I felt. But at least the Russians had returned our entering salute. The following morning we had only one visitor, the harbor doctor, to give us pratique. I accompanied him to the sick bay and to index. No sickness, no plague, no pestilence? None. Yes, I have seen for myself. Only the wounded man. His name? Lieutenant Mound. Yes, yes, he does very well. After you, sir. Later that morning, the wind began to flaw. It was very light, changing first from one quarter to another. I had requested Witchwood and the Baron and Bush and one or two of my senior officers to meet me in my cabin. There was much to decide. And one of them, I think it was Lieutenant Adams, gave voice to what we all had on our minds. Changeable, sir. That's what these Russians are. It's like the wind. Exactly why we're here, Mr. Adams. We can do nothing about the weather. We must do something about the Russians. When does His Majesty arrive on board, exactly? Incognito, Baron. Remember, incognito. The Comte de North. His party will arrive at seven bells. Sir, we'll be taking on water and firewood then. Yes, so we will, Bush. I can give orders to have it put off till tomorrow. You will have to serve an elaborate luncheon, Sir Horatio. What, in mid-afternoon? Oh, absolute. With Russians, there must always be something to eat. The Baron's right, Hornblower. It's their custom always. Oh, very well. We'll offer him something to eat. Why not? Oh, a pity that butter of yours has turned rancid. You know what I'd suggest, Hornblower? Hmm? Send a party ashore, dig up some of that caviar stuff, and sturgeon or whatever it is, fish. These Ruskies positively dote on fish. Colonel, this is a British ship. But my dear fellow, what's that got to do with it? When in Rome, well, you know the rest of that one. Yes, yes, you must make a considerable impression. Politic, my dear Hornblower. It would be most politic. Shall I put off the water and firewood, sir? Um, no, Bush. No? But how can we take in water and be in a fit state for the Tsar to come aboard, sir? Unless we water the flitter first? From what I've heard of the Tsar, he's a man of sense. We'll show him the hands at work, that's all. Ship's routine. At work? At Commodore? Yes, in every quarter of the ship, exactly, Colonel. Between decks, in the rigging, in the sick bay. And as for food, we'll give him what we always have. Ship's biscuit, pea soup, boiled beef. Oh, oh my yeah. dear fellow, but, but, but hornblower, I do uh, believe you must be mad. Offend the Tsar in that manner, and he'll go over to Bonaparte quick as a wink. I beg of you, Chips, sir. Chips, biscuit, pea soup, and boiled beef, Lord Witchwood. Now, you've all been recommending that we put on unnatural airs. I, I don't believe in that kind of dissembling. He wants to see a British ship of war, does he? Very well, then. He shall. Good afternoon, Commodore. I hope our little visit does not discommode you greatly. Not in any way to compare to the honor done to the ship, sir. May I today present uh, Colonel Lord Whitwood? Honored your ma <coughs> sir. Baron Bassey? Honored, sir. Captain Bush, Master of the Nantuch. Your servant, sir. Captain Bush, will you give orders to prepare the ship for taking on water and firewood? Monsieur Le Comte, uh, if you'd care to see more of the ship. I would indeed. <laughs> The gun deck, sir. Uh, watch your head, sir. There's very little clearance for a man of your height. <coughs> so, I observe. We've opened the gun ports to give you a demonstration, sir. Mr. Carlin, if you please. Aye, aye, sir. Battle stations! Hold you the back! You'll notice the guns are loaded blank. Cannonballs are precious. Not easy to come by when long at sea, sir. I think blank will suffice. Halt, sergeants! Stop it, Betty! Fire! Interesting. Most interesting. The midshipman's berth, Monsieur Le Comte. This 
tiny space? Yes, sir. <laughs> Commodore, you were once a midshipman yourself? Uh, for four years, sir. In the British Navy, everyone starts at the bottom. Four years? You lived four years in a bath like this? Well, not quite as comfortable as this, sir. I was in a frigate. This is a battleship. It's not as crowded. Mm. Yeah, I suppose it is necessary. How long have you served? I've been in the Navy 19 years, sir. How long at your present rank? As Commodore, only two months. Uh, nine years before that as captain, six years lieutenant, and four years as a midshipman. Nineteen years. And yet you seem none the worse for it. Sir, they've been the happiest days of my life. Monsieur Le Comte, it grows late. May I suggest luncheon? <laughs> that we were seated in my cabin around the table, a wave of doubt swept over me, real doubt. And then I was certain that what I'd done was utterly wrong. I cursed myself for a headstrong fool. What did an imperial monarch care about life on board a man of war? All he said was incredible, amazing. And then Lieutenant Adams reached for a ship's biscuit. He wrapped it on the table, and I wished with all my soul that I were dead. Why do you do that, sir? This? Oh, uh, well, I was just, uh... Um... Oh, pray continue, Mr. Adams. Uh, we do that, sir, to get rid of the weevils. The weevils? Uh, insect family, sir. He's knocking them out. Yes, that, that, that's right, sir. If you tap gently, they come out of their own accord. Well, this way. Do you see, sir? Uh, yes. Yes, I see. Captain Bush, uh, will you pass Monsieur Le Comte the biscuit tray? Uh, no, 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 thank you. I, I think not, thank you. <clears throat> Brown, will you serve the soup? Yes, sir. Pea soup, Monsieur Le Comte. In the British Navy, pea soup is a tradition. Pea soup? Hmm. Eh, why, this is extremely good soup. Yes, extremely. I commend it to Your Excellency. Well, I... I... Come, come, Brown, serve us all. His Excellency the Minister, Baron Bassey. I'm hungry as a bear. Rum is uh, very good. <laughs> Quite strong, however. Yes, British rum, Your Excellency. The lifeblood of the Navy. Sir, does Bonaparte need a reason for invasion? He's a tyrant. Tyrants make up any excuse or none at all. Now he controls the entire Baltic coast as far as the frontiers of, your, uh, of, his, of his Imperial Majesty's domain. And now that... Uh, pray continue. Well, I know little of politics, sir. What little you know seems to be most important. Bonaparte has threatened Russia. There are great decisions to be made. I understand that the Prince Bernadotte is meeting with the Tsar at Peterhof. At any moment. Yes, I've heard that too. Sir, Bonaparte's threats are always serious. His methods are always the same. A demand and then another demand. A concession and then another concession. And finally, when the last concession has made his foe too weak by then to resist fully, he marches in and makes an easy conquest. He wishes every nation in bondage to you him. You are very eloquent, Commodore. I Lord. speak from the heart, sir. I speak for Lord Witchwood and Captain Bush and Lieutenant Adams and Lieutenant Carlin. I speak for every British soul who's fought against this monstrous power. And to what effect have you fought? Britain is still free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Britain is striking back. Portugal is free at last. Sicily, too, thanks to England. Sir, there is only one way left for Bonaparte to turn. We've closed him in on the south and the west and the north. And all that is left to him is the east. Imperial Russia. You hear, sir? The hour strikes. Gentlemen, may I propose a toast? To the Emperor of all the Russians. Vive l'Empereur! Vive l'Empereur! Gentlemen, another toast. The King of Great Britain. Okay. If you please, pray, my dear Colonel. Will you refill the glasses? Gentlemen, I give you Commodore Horatio Hornblower and the British Royal Navy. May they join with Mother Russia to defeat the French tyrant. Join with... Oh, sir, to that we all drink. Oh, yes, sir, most heartily. <laughs> Oh, 
Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers. Thank you.